All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over PropStream. Well, in the next series, we're going to go over PropStream, but we're kind of going to go down and get really granular in the data. I'm going to kind of show you kind of what we do, just our basic searches, our go-to searches for whenever we get a new client or for ourselves in our own, our, our own county. If you just want to quickly see you know, where the data is at, what are the numbers um, in specific zip codes, areas, cities, counties, and just make our quick list knowing that we're going to mark it to this list for the next several months. Either make our quick list or make a list that we know we're going to be doing long campaigns to. So I'll just show you some basic stuff and kind of just go in to a lot of the different um, criteria, search criteria that we make for vacants, absentees, um, out of state lanes, and so forth. So just to show you real quick, there's three different ways you can search. Obviously, they tell you at the top, enter city, zip code, or address. We go by county. Um, some clients we get, they kind of want to stick to specific zip codes in the beginning. Um, instead of doing one zip code at a time, there's a trick where you can just do zip code by zip code, but with a comma. Once you hit search, it'll actually only search those specific zip codes and pull up the data for you. Now, we kind of just like to go straight to county because um, the type of marketing we do, we know if we stick with it and we stay consistent, um, obviously, depending on the county and where you live and how, how many people actually live there or own a home, you know, literally, if you have a good ad spend budget and consistent marketing, it won't take long for you to own all the data. <laughs> and that's what we've kind of realized um, in today with the marketing that's out there. Um, so we kind of just start with county. We don't really get specific with the zip code. If you want to go zip code by zip code, then, you know, that's one strategy. Um, one strategy you take, well, this is the strategy we take. We kind of go wide with the county. You know, of course, we go through our basic searches. And then after we've searched everything and we think we own all absentee and foreclosures and we have the up-to-date auctions and equity and vacant, then at that point, then we kind of go zip code by zip code and kind of target zip codes that obviously we know are older homes or more rundown homes and then figure out what data we haven't purchased in those zip codes by scrubbing to, of course, our master sheet after the previous months of buying everything. So we'll go ahead and get started. I think in this one, I'll just kind of go over the, explain that and just kind of show you quickly to pull quick list for um, homes that have auction date or pre foreclosure. I like to call these quick lists just because, uh, you know, they're, whether in the pre foreclosure or have an auction date coming up, you know, they don't have much time, stress levels up. And I think these are the type of people you'd either really, you would want to tour knock, cold call. Um, letters can work. This is where I would spend money on letters. I wouldn't spend letters on absentee owners or vacant owners or liens. Yeah, maybe liens you would go back and forth, but you'd have to get really granular on the liens. Um, depending on the area and if there's a lot of liens, definitely get a little bit more granular, but we'll go into that later. But kind of how we start, we just go straight to the filter. I got my San Diego County. Actually, let's switch it up. Kind of saved. Let's go to Harris County out in Texas. This is where Houston's at. Let's let it load for a little bit. Come on. Yeah, prop stream's a little bit slow, but it's pretty pretty good once it's there. But we can go ahead and start filtering. Right off the bat, we, you know, for this, we're going to go owner-occupied, especially if we're going after NODs, auction dates. Um, occupied status right there. Property characteristics. Um, for me, we always go, of course, you want to just filter residential. We, we kind of only go after single family. If you're down with going condo and townhouse, go for it. We'll either go single family or multifamily. And then we always, uh, well, actually, I would actually, when you do your searches, I would kind of keep these separate. I would do one search for single family and then do a separate search for multifamily only because, you know, I want to get specific with my uh, square footage and uh, other, other types of filtering. So building size, off the bat, we always stick to between 1,000 and 3,000. Um, it seems like that's kind of the square footage between those right there are the ones that you know sell the quickest and have the high, you know, most high demand. And of course, usually it's between those square foot, you know, footage that you're going to have a good size amount of bedrooms and bathrooms and don't have to filter by that. 
MLS status. I'm always going to click on market. Um, I know some people have asked, is this really accurate? I believe it is. We, I have done the test. I've done a test where I've pulled a list of saying off market, and then I pulled a list saying any, and the client started getting um, callbacks from people who actually just listed their property or it's listed. So I strongly believe this is accurate. So I'm always going to click no. I don't want on market properties. Now, if you're finding getting people calling you back who have a listed property so you can get in touch with them, go for it. But this is this is what we do. Um, so pretty much that is it there. Come back to that. Ownership info. I always put individual. You can even put troll. Well, we're going after Brian O'Dee, so I'd probably just stick to individual. Never, I never, never, never want corporate, corporate owned. And of course, go back to pre-foreclosure uh, for this tab. And they did recently come out with updates, so now it's they have a little bit more. Um, so let's say we want to go NOD and click here and just go ahead and see our records. Um, always play, I would say play around with the dates. That's kind of my tip right there. Because you can always tell when you go on the card. Let's see, you notice we'll be pending, recording date. Recording date was back in July. Um, so it's up to you if you kind of, depending on how aggressive you are as an investor, you have to remember you always got to pay attention to the dates because if you're a little late on a property that's already, you know, hit the record, you know, there's probably gonna be a lot more other investors and wholesalers kind of targeting this. We don't necessarily go after, you know, homes that are in dependent or in brief or pre foreclosure, obviously depending on which state you're in. Um, we kind of kind of stick to properties that most of a lot of your newbie investors or newbie wholesalers don't really go after. So I'd always, you know, the list is always going to be smaller. So this is the type of list you can easily save and kind of just skim through the properties and check the dates, you know, manually if you want and just really take a look at the property. Or again, you can always just go back and um, change up the recording date and play with that. Do some, see if there's any, maybe not. Yeah, I may pull something like that. I got 50 right there that you can kind of manually go through. And like I said, this, these would be the type of list that you'd want to cold call, maybe go door knock. Um, but that's it right there. Um, you can even switch to auctions. I would do those as two separate lists. Um, with auctions, maybe put that way, you maybe want to put more future date. I got one record there. Not many auctions, actually. Well, let's go back to San Diego County, maybe. I'll kind of show you. There's quite a bit. Let's go off market. With auction date, I kind of always want to go with a future date just to kind of give you some time, unless you're one of those guys who kind of likes to hit those properties at the last second. But again, with how much work you got to put into it, really want to make sure you play with the dates on this one to make sure you go after a good batch if you're kind of targeting homes that have an auction date already set or that are in pre-foreclosure. Um, but that's how I would kind of handle um, pre-foreclosures and you know NODs or auction date properties. Um, that's kind of the quick basic route we would go. I'm going to hit reset on this. Clear all. Let's go back to Harris County. Now I'm going to kind of show you kind of our basic walkthrough of going after homes with liens. So kind of go through the same motion. Kind of half the filtering is always stays the same. You know, we got owner occupied. I'm going to start with occupied, especially for liens. Um, actually, with lanes, we'll go with any. Um, depending on what type of marketing you have, if let's say you do multiple marketing, or let's say you like to send mailers to lanes, I would probably switch maybe mailers with occupied and stick maybe, and then do a separate list of vacant um, lanes and maybe hit those with uh, cold calling, RVMs, or texting. Um, but let's just go back and let's just play with occupied. You can always create two different lists. That's how I do it. I always usually create two different lists, maybe one with occupied, one with vacant, but all the other filtering stays the same. 
Let's go with single family. Let's go with condo. MLS status, make sure it's off market. Ownership info, always put individual owner. We can even throw in trust there. And then let's go to liens. And then I'd put as an active lien. And then go with, sometimes with that, we usually just go with 20% right off the bat. And kind of see what our number is right there. So as we can see, wow, there is a, a lot of homes with liens out here in Texas. Didn't realize that, 24,000, okay. All right, so that is a very large list. Now, obviously, if you have a good size budget with ringless voicemails and taxing, that's a kind of a list size you'd want to pull. Obviously, if your ad budget's not that high, you want to be conserved with your ad spend, and you want to, you know, of course, go after vacants and other type of properties. From here, we can get granular, and this is what we'll do. Um, like, we already have it at occupied. Ownership info. Let's see here. I'm going to go back to lean. And this is what would this would be the next filtering that I would do. Come back to the lean tab and go lean them out. And then I want to start targeting people who have the highest, the largest amount of liens. Usually, usually if it's low, obviously depending like here in San Diego, if it's a thousand bucks, two thousand, you know, if it's a low lien amount, they'll always try to figure out a way to get out of it. They'll be patient and they can try to pay it off. But I want to go with the people who probably can't afford it. Put a minimum of seven thousand. Nope, not even high enough. I'm going to shoot for the stars, 20000 minimum $20,000 lien. Okay, so we brought it down to 3437 And I'm going to shoot higher. Wow, lien amount of 30000 Actually, I forgot to do one more thing. Let's go back to ownership info. I'm going to put, we always put two years. Um, I mean, with a lean amount this high, even if they just bought it, like we can see this first one at the top last sale date was just last month. Um, they'll usually try to, you know, they won't be urgent to sell right away. Obviously we don't know their situation and you can always, you know, play with it. This list size, you can easily pull and attack it. And of course, even though they just bought this property and might sit for a while and not be urgent to sell it, even with a large lien amount, you can keep in the system and put them on a drip, make sure that you're touching them, you know, every single month. But we can switch that to a minimum of two years, it brings this list down to 1,480. And I'd say that would be a very good size list for any wholesaler or investor, obviously depending on your ad spend budget. Um, for your monthly budget. But again, if I was in Houston and the amount of liens I just saw, I would try to shoot to just buy them all, of course, and uh, kind of target them. But again, you can save them. I would say maybe save them at two different searches, have a high urgency one with the ones that have huge, you know, own a quite a bit on their lien. And then maybe do another search where I take that away and then, uh, and then pull everything else and kind of put the other ones that aren't as urgent and just put them on like a monthly, maybe on, on a drip for every three weeks or so. So that's how I would kind of approach um, ones with auction date, pre-foreclosure, and then of course the liens as well. You can also play with the equity. But again, in this situation with liens, I would just kind of break it down by years of ownership and also how much they own, how, you know, how much is their lien and how much do they owe. Equity at this point doesn't really matter to me. I'll take a sale. So that's how I take this approach is how to filter down and kind of get granular with uh, the liens and foreclosures.